Okay, so this is the recap only of session 15 into the abyss under Spire Labyrinth. Somehow the recording got messed up, so this is just my recap. I do not have a recording of the actual live play. So in this session, we had Bryn, Gralmar, Helmet, Splug, and the NPC Senor, uh, also played by Don. So in the last session, the group short rested on the platform in the Hall of the Crimson Whip. So I'll change the map here real quick, kind of give you a visual representation of where they left off. Down here to the right, everyone is kind of all comfy on the platform. Uh, Barda and Danny are not here, but uh, their tokens are here because they played with us in several sessions. So uh, the group take a short rest here. Uh, during that short rest, I believe it was Splug's sword was telling him to basically come back here if he wanted to fight again, make Baphomet proud. Uh, basically alluding to the fact that these things are going to regenerate possibly if they wait around very long. So they just took a short rest, rolled some hit dice, and then headed down this hallway to the right here. Uh, the end of this hallway came to a T. There were some kind of strange tracks on the floor where they didn't investigate that. Instead, they turned right into a doorway, probably about 40 feet down the hallway here. Uh, from there, uh, I'll switch to that map to kind of give you a visual representation of what all they saw. Just scroll over here and do a shift click for you guys. So within this room, they saw four pools or wells of some kind of liquid uh, through a series of perception, investigation, nature checks. Uh, they determined that this pool was a pool of poison. Uh, this pool was a pool of poison resistance. Uh, this pool, they were unable to identify just as some kind of a natural red liquid uh, to which Splug Sword was telling to you. Uh, partake in that one as well because Splug was actually inserting his sword in each one of these pools to see the reaction from his sword. Sword liked all of them. Uh, Splug actually stuck his sword in, into this one looked like crystal clear blue water after he'd already stuck his sword in one or all of them. So this pool is now somewhat contaminated just from Splug's sword but from what they could tell it's just plain pure crystal blue water. Uh, they also discovered a rune circle down here. Again, probably one of the four locations they need to drop one of those four items once they get once they collect them all. Uh, but nothing else of real interest uh, in this room. So they headed out this doorway down at the bottom, and then headed south uh, down this hallway. Uh, at the end of that hallway, they came to some double doors. Uh, they opened the double doors, and what they saw inside was basically a living, writhing mass of pillars in uh, various locations inside the room. I got a little handout here to kind of give you a visual res representation of what those look like. Uh, but that's what the pillars look like. So they're made of stone, but they were moving around and arms and faces. And as a matter of fact, they were howling as soon as they opened the door. And when they did that, Gralnar was frightened and uh, turned tail and ran uh, 60, 90 feet back up the hallway while the rest of them uh, tried to figure out how to get past these. Uh, they ran up and, and struck them. They shot them. Uh, but as they got close enough, they realized these things were actually attacking them. And some of their whales actually had a magical property that if they failed, would actually teleport them uh, right next to one of the pillars so they could get attacked. So let's switch to that room so you can kind of see the carnage uh, that was left at the end of the battle. All right, so back on this map. Uh, this is basically the, the end of the fight of what you're seeing here on the map. Uh, but basically they came in through the doorway up here and each one of these pillars had those arms and heads uh, attacking and wailing. Uh, this area over here is where they kept getting teleported to for those that failed to save against that magical whale they had. Uh, 
uh, but eventually Splug and I think a few others tried to dash down into this room. Once Splug got down here, he saw the disc ball girl right here actually emerged from this column of writhing hands and faces and began to attack. But as he emerged, he also called forth his minions uh, to attack as well. And by that point, most of the party was already into the room. And there were demons that emerged from the columns up here where they first came in. Uh, also from the columns here. And they joined the fight as well. Uh, a couple people, I think, were transported over here by feeling their saves against the wailing. Uh, Sinor being one of them. And while Sinor was over here, he was actually being flanked. So he actually transformed into a vine blight, which I believe was the first time that the party had seen him use that ability. But he switched into a vine blight to kind of give himself a little bit extra hit points, a little bit extra AC to make him more of a bruiser uh, than he is right now as a magic user. Uh, so this ball girl also attacked. I think Helmet is the one that eventually um, took him down with a killing blow. Uh, when that happened, uh, these pillars stopped moving and they stopped regenerating. Uh, the party did take down several of these where they stopped moving and all the hands and heads went limp. But after a round or two, they were coming back. But once the ball girl was killed, uh, they stopped regenerating. Uh, Splug, uh, during the fight, activated his uh, short sword of doom, his best friend. And uh, the party eventually realized that Splug had transformed completely into a goblin skeleton. And that, he remained a skeleton until such time as I think he landed a critical blow or critical shot uh, on this carnage demon right here. And when he did that, the carnage demon's flesh kind of like, let's say exploded, but kind of left uh, that body, swirled around, and then... Uh, went into Splug, and his body reformed with the flesh of that carnage demon. Uh, he was only down a couple hit points, uh, but he got healed completely, and now he's uh, Splug, just maybe a little bit more red than he was before. But he's back to normal. Again, no longer a skeleton. Uh, let's see. So after the fight, they uh, found a little bell on this altar. Uh, Spl Splug went to go grab it, uh, but as he did, Spikes attempted to shoot into his hand out of the, the little bell. Someone played an inspiration card, so the bell was not stuck to Splug's hand. Instead, Splug kind of picked it up with a short sword and then dropped it into a bag. Uh, they also found a little secret compartment between the altar. Inside that secret compartment were some magic boots. Uh, Shadow Dancer's boots. This is the uncommon variety of attendance it's part of the set, so it's all uncommon. Uh, they eventually decided that uh, Splug would be the best suited uh, to keep these boots. So that is what they did. Uh, from there, they started to kind of decide what they want to do next, and this is where we'll pick up in the next session. Uh, where the party wants to try to harvest, using some harvesting tools, uh, some demon blood. The Bagheras are these carnage demons because Bryn still needs that for her little uh, uh, instructions of the ritual and the stone tablet she has. If they can find that room again and, and donate this blood or offer it or whatever, it's supposed to uh, reveal a magical treasure uh, for them to to find. I don't know if it's a it reveals a map to location or reveals the actual treasure, but. First things first, they need demon blood or to do that little uh, procedure to see what uh, may come out of it. Uh, from there, they talked about wanting to scout out the rest of this area. And then I showed them the entire map with a little bit of fog of war. So let me switch to that and kind of show you what I shared with the players. I do a little shift click here. All right, so the party came in through this way when they first entered the Will of Demons. In the last session, they ended up down here with the Howling Pillars. And their plan was to head north back up this hallway and then turn right into this doorway because it hadn't been in there yet. 
I think their plan is to kind of scout out the rest of this darkened area, see what else is in there uh, before they, well, they still got to find two more of the uh, ring circles where they have to place these four items. So they have a bell, they have the knife, they have the, the hilt and the dagger, uh, hilt and the blade, I should say, two different pieces that make the knife. Uh, they also see the mask, the, the knife, they now have the bell, and they have the book. Those are the four items they need. Now they need to find out where those four rune circles are and where they have to be placed all at the same time in order to activate uh, the last test of these proven grounds, the guardian, uh, the green dragon. They defeat that. Then they can enter the inner sanctum where they hope to find the last two uh, slaves that were captured of the merchant caravan. Uh, those two slaves they discovered were sold uh, to the gnolls in this area. So they're hoping that uh, somewhere in here, either scouting out or maybe the inner sanctum, they will find those last two uh, prisoners or slaves. And that's where we left off the last session. So we'll see you again in the next session.